Hey guys, welcome to this week's Golang tutorial. Where we're going to be looking at Golang networking uh, in this tutorial video and a couple of other videos in this series. So for the first tutorial, we're just going to be looking at a very simple TCP server using Golang. So just to start off with a blank file, I just created TCP server.go and then we're going to start creating a bit of code just to create a very basic TCP socket server which you can use to connect via Telnet and then be able to push data to it and it will display within our server. So this is the most basic server type that you can create uh, for TCP and use it within your applications. So in Golang you could create a little bit of a desktop front end to it, whatever you like, but the main thing is that it's going to be socket driven so before we get started i just want to say if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet uh, please do so now and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss any tutorials in future so to get started with this uh, we're just going to start off with some really basic stuff i'm going to show you how to just uh, structure your little application and the first thing we'll just do is just do a package so we can call it Golang Tutorials, that's fine. And then we could even just call it main. I'm actually gonna call it main, just to keep things really simple for us. And you save that off. And then the first function we're going to have is our main function, like always in Golang. So that's our entry point. And then what we'll do is before we import anything, I'm going to allow Visual Studio Code to import these packages, just so that we can actually focus on the code. But I'll explain what all of these packages are once they get imported. So first thing we want to do is we want to listen for a connection. So a server will always listen for a connection. So just to comment it out here, and first thing is listen. Next thing is it will accept the connection. And then the third thing a server needs to do is handle the connection. And basically that uh, connection handling is going to happen in a separate thread and that will allow us to have multiple clients be able to connect to this single server. So here is what we'll do. We'll start off with the lesson portion and let me show you how that works. So the first thing we need to do is we need to basically create a data stream. So I'm just gonna call this the stream over here. And then what we need to do is just have an error message as well. We'll assign this to basically net, which is the package which we use. And you'll see there's a lot of different methods you can use in here, like dial, for example, is a way to connect to a server. We'll cover this in later tutorials where we actually create a TCP client as well. But for now, we're just going to create the server. So what we need is something called listen. We'll listen and we'll basically pass it the type of server we want. It's TCP. You have different types of TCP. You can have v4 here, you can have v6, but we'll just make it TCP just to keep it simple. Then you need to provide it a port number that it's going to listen on. So we'll make it 8080. That's a fairly standard port which is available on my machine, uh, Windows, and probably every other machine you're probably developing on right now. Unless you're running some type of uh, web service or whatever, but you can make this whatever you like. Um, anything over 9,000 usually will be available to you. The next thing we'll do is we'll just do some error handling. It's a very simple error handling. We'll just check if the error is not null. So if you're used to other programming languages, null is basically like null in those languages. And then what we'll do is we'll just do an FN, FMT println and we'll print out the error. And then we'll return because if there is an error, we don't want to bother doing anything else. Next, we just need to defer our DStream from closing so that we have an opportunity to actually uh, read our stream before the connection closing. Next, we need to do an infinite loop. I'm just going to do a for like this. So it's so easy to do. And then we need to create a connection. So I'm going to just call it con like this and we'll have an error and we'll assign this to 
dstream dot accept. So basically accept is just going to, once it's listened for a connection and it's now found a connection, it will accept the connection and initiate this connection stream basically, which we can then go and handle a connection and read some data out of it. Once again, we're going to do this exact same little error check over here. So we'll just copy this over to here. And if it fails, we'll just return so that we don't do anything else. Next, we're going to use a go routine. So if you are familiar with C sharp, for example, it's similar to coroutines. It sort of creates a, a thread um, within the code and then it runs separately from your main thread. So in a nutshell, that's basically what it is, but it is a lot more in depth. Uh, so I would say rather go read up about coroutines, go routines, and uh, just understand it a little bit better. But in a nutshell, it's basically going to create a new thread for us. So we'll do go just to create the go routine, and then you can give it a function name. So I'll just uh, call this handle and we'll pass in our connection. Then we actually need to go and define this connection or this handle. So we'll create handle and we now need to tell it what the parameter is. So basically it's going to be con and it's a con from the net package. So you've got to say net.con. And now basically we can handle this connection within this go routine. Once again, we'll just do an infinite loop and then we'll start reading data using the buffer IO package. So we'll just call this data and we'll do an error again. And then we'll use buff IO. And basically we want to create a new reader. So this will create like a input output reader for us from the connection that we have. And then we'll be able to do all sorts of reading and all that sort of stuff using this reader. So I'll do con and then if you just do a dot you should be able to get options. The editor isn't being helpful but one of the methods you will use is something called read string just to keep things simple. You could read bytes, you could read hex, you could do whatever you like but we'll read a string just to keep it really simple. And then basically we'll read only when we encounter a new line character. Great, so once that happens, then we'll be able to read the data out of our buffer or out of our connection stream and then into a buffer and then put it into this data variable and then we can actually print it out, do whatever we need to do, do some checks, um, whatever else, and then be able to handle connections. So here's what we'll do, is we'll basically then say, uh, again, we'll just do a check for the error. So we'll just copy the same code again and put it in here and simply return if it fails out. Next, what we need to do is we need to just print it out, print out the data we have. So do fmt println and we can print out data just like that. Then at the end of the handle, we'll basically just close the connection. So I'll just close it like so. And that's basically the end of our TCP server. So here is what happened. So basically we imported a buff IO, which we use for our reader, FMTP or FMT just to print our data to our console. And then net will basically handle the listening and the acceptance of connections for us. So now to run the server, very simple. We'll just go and type go run tcp server dot go. And basically it's gonna ask us to allow the server and I'm going to allow it. And now it's basically running. So now to show you how to connect to this, I'm going to use a tool called Putty. If you have Linux or Mac, you can use uh, Telnet from your uh, Terminal, or if you've got a PowerShell in Windows, you can use a Telnet as well. But I'm going to use Putty because it's going to be quite simple to use. So I'm just going to show you how to set that up. So I'm going to create a new session here. And then basically, you'll just choose Telnet. And then we'll type in localhost because that's where our server is running. 
And then on port 8080 is where we've bound our service. So we'll just put 8080 here and we'll open that up. Now we can type anything in and hit enter. And you'll see this first part is part of the TCP headers. And then there's our data. If we type some more stuff, you'll see that it just prints it out. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate the session so that we have two clients. So you can just right click on this window here and you can duplicate session and you'll see it will instantly connect to localhost on port 8080. And now we can type some more stuff on this side and we can do it on this side. So that's just to prove to you that we actually have multiple clients connecting to one single server on two different threads. So guys, basically that's the end of this uh, tutorial. And you'll, just before we say goodbye, I'm just going to say that it will have this end of file when the uh, client disconnects. So you'll be able to pick that up as well and do all sorts of uh, little handling around that. But this is the most basic form of a TCP server that you can build in Golang. And uh, using read strings, it makes it really simple. You don't have to use uh, buffers like bytes. Uh, byte buffers etc you just use strings which are human readable and it makes it a lot easier for you to to work with obviously um to make uh, these things more efficient you would want to use bytes but um, just to test it and play around with it reading strings etc is not a bad idea as well so guys basically end of this tutorial now i hope you liked it if you liked it please like below and if you have questions please leave it in the comment section and thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.